Greetings, family, friends, and survivors. Well, we talked about this a uh, few days ago about having my interconnect cables that were made out of used welding wire, 40, 45 year old wire. And I had one parallel cable that was a different length from the positive side. It was two inches longer, but it was also a different cable, different brand with different two different connectors on each end. Uh, they were different from each other. And that was a potential problem. The interconnect cables were definitely oxidized and an issue. And all it takes is for one cable, one interconnect cable to have a poor connection or high resistance connection and it's going to throw the whole bank out of whack. So everything is new now. It's all brand new X-Lean 2 watt multi-strand welding cable. Paid very close attention to the length of the cabling. Changed all the way up to the shunt for the battery meter. So all of this is new now and I would like to have done it four years ago but we just didn't have the money at the time. So here's one interconnect cable and you can see some corrosion there. And that's enough corrosion right there to throw one whole string off. Right there, that's enough. All it takes is a little bit less resistance and uh, you've got a problem. So glad I checked. That's the only corrosion by the way. All the other interconnects were shiny. Four years, no problem. But the problem wasn't at the terminations on the lugs. The problem was in the high press crimps. So this is a bright shiny cable. And even though this one was the negative jumper, it was a shiny cable, no oxidation, but it was two inches longer and it had different lugs. Looked like a copper lug and a copper clad. And that alone could have been enough to change it. The two inches difference and the two different lugs might have thrown everything into a tizzy. So this is the new cable. That's what's left from the new stuff that I installed. And it should be bright like that. And then I got pre tin lugs. But this is the interconnects that I had. And I'll bring it out here into the sunlight so you could see. See the oxidation in that. That is not bright shiny copper at all. You can see on the end where I cut it it is. But current travels on the outside of a wire. Check it out. It's a true story. So... I brushed these out with a stainless steel brush and got as much oxidation out as I could, but all it would have taken is having one crimp with the wire with a little more oxidation than the other and a little bit more resistance than the next interconnect cable and I've got a problem. Do you see the problem right away? No, you don't see the problem right away. You'll see it four years down the road though. So, I wish I had done this earlier, but, you know, it's 120 bucks to change the cabling out. And we have wonderful honeybees all over the wisteria. And I wish I could bottle that smell and send it to you. Isn't that just beautiful? The one on the back side of the house is uh, just like this one. And it looks like the honeysuckle is trying to take over my solar panel. So now we have brand new cable on all of the interconnects and the paralleling uh, jumpers with the same exact TEPCO ends, TEMCO ends, uh, lugs. And the pretend just a lot better than these old school copper lugs. In fact, this one was bored to half inch, and this particular one was going on a 3 8 bus, and uh, that alone is a problem, another problem. And I had some that were 3 8 and they were going on 5 16 terminations. That's another problem. So getting everything typical, that's the name of the game. I knew that was true, but I didn't know it was true enough to drop everything and eat some rice and beans for a month so I could buy some cables. Probably would have been really worth it. We'll see down the road what old interconnects will do. But that was only part of the problem. As you saw from the last video, um, finding out from Interstate the data sheet on these, good luck. 
called interstate and they just say we'll just leave it on such and such a charger um, and they just want you to put it on the charger that was designed for the floor scrubber model that you have and going they in other words they didn't know anything so I finally found some information a data sheet from another battery distributor that gave me the data sheet for these batteries and sure enough 31 volts 2.58 volts per cell 29.8 or 30 30.8 30 I think is what it comes out to 2.58 times 12 so we'll call it 30 volts excuse me call it 31 volts 30 is where I've been um, for four years 30 volts and what was happening was it would take five hours for the specific gravity to creep up to where it needed to be <coughs> excuse me now with the 31 volt absorb uh, it's getting up there in three quite nicely and so my idea next was to tighten up the group I took a specific gravity measurement couple days ago so I would have a reference to see whether we're actually getting any better and so if those tighten up some I'm going to be real happy and I had to push them up pretty hard uh, to get the higher ones where the lower ones were acceptable like this one here 1.288 which for a Trojan that's high for these batteries that spot now don't take my word for it this is not a teaching video nor an instructional video this is an entertainment video because I don't know what I'm doing and you shouldn't take my word for it you should definitely contact the manufacturer and uh, here's a good one don't buy batteries that are reluctant to give you all of the information on the charge uh, parameters for the batteries. I know everybody else gives them to you. I've only talked to a couple of them in person and looked extensively online and I can't find the information. It's just not there. But if I go to Trojan, Roll Surat, Solar One, even DECA, oh here it is. Charge it like this. But I haven't been able to get that from Interstate. Don't know why. It's just the way it is. But I did talk to uh, or read a blog from an engineer extensively and he explained why these are HC's and they're 420 amp hours rather than 375 and what he said and apparently he worked for interstate and what he said was the batteries have heavier plates because their sister battery the one that's not an HC high capacity um, it weighs I think 104 pounds something like that and these are 118 pounds so considerably more lead but he went on to explain the reason why there was more lead is because they raised the charge parameters to a higher voltage and absorb pushing the specific gravity up higher and that higher specific gravity is what gave them the extra capacity now understand the extra capacity the high capacity the HC battery got its extra capacity from 375 amp hours it went up to 420 amp hours that extra capacity is done with a higher specific gravity well when you have a higher specific gravity there's more shedding and more uh, plate uh, wear and tear on the lead plates themselves so what they did is they put in thicker plates to handle more abuse and that's what this engineer says and what I'm finding out is when I push these batteries up to 31 volts, it doesn't take hours and hours to get the specific gravity up there. Here's another indicator. Before, when I had 30 volts for the absorb, by the end of the day, I'd gained almost 10 degrees on my battery bank, 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And when I switch to 31 volts, I'm getting like six degrees change. So I'm not heating the batteries up. That tells me I'm going to be using less water with a higher voltage setting that's a shorter absorb period. Hope I haven't confused you. And again, <laughs> I'm trying to be entertaining, not instructional, because 
Um, I'm kind of dizzy today, and I'm not even sure if I should post this video. But folks, don't play around with this stuff if you don't know. You could push the charge parameters up high enough to have a giant bomb. There's a lot of current there, and they gas really hard when you raise the voltage. And if you had a spark, there would be no building here at all. So don't experiment like this. I never made the change to the higher voltage until I was actually able to find some documentation. And I'm monitoring them very closely, monitoring the temperature, monitoring the water loss, etc. So the other thing is people say, put in a battery desulfator. And I read a lot of information from the Battery University and other engineers on blogs. And this is what they say about the desulfator. The desulfators put AC ripple into the battery, thinking that it will shake off the sulfate crystals and fall to the bottom of the well. But what they found out is these desulfators are causing soft spots in the plates on removing the paste, destroying the paste and creating soft spots in the plates that cause soft shorts and soft shorts, um, then the battery will start uh, losing capacity. Uh, in other words, it's self-draining. So I'm gonna stay away from battery desulfators and just simply put the proper charge on them and do the proper maintenance. And here again, I'm confessing to you that I should have checked these cables and done a better job than that and noticed that I was having a problem sooner than I did. But as one guy told me, he says, when sulfate shows up, it shows up in a hurry. I mean, like minutes, bang, there it is. Well, that's true for soft sulfate because you have to create uh, sulfation crystals in, while you're making power. But when you charge them back up correctly, those crystals convert back into the electrolyte as part of the chemical process. Probably gave you more than you need to know. What I want to do is just set the camera up on the Listeria and put on some nice music. Oh, look at all the pollen on those panels. My goodness. Well, it's time to wash those. All right, folks. Have a great day.